Some elders and leaders from the Niger Delta under the umbrella of the Pan-Niger Delta Forum have appealed to the leadership of the All Progressives Congress to zone the position of Senate President to the South-South Geopolitical Zone in the interest of equity and fairness. The group in a statement on Tuesday signed by its National Publicity Secretary Ken Robinson noted that the last time someone from the present uh, South-South states occupied the office of the Senate President was during the Second Republic between 1979 and 1983, when the late Senator Joseph Wires from Cross River State was elected first in October 1979. Kasima Febwa is a one-time commissioner for information in Edo State, and he joins us now to look at the merits and demerits of this demand, as well as offer his thoughts on the controversial ending to the governorship election in Adamawa State, which his party eventually won. Well, welcome to the show, Mr. Kazim Afebwa. Now, before we go to, you know, the results of the supplementary elections in Adamawa State, let's talk about, you know, this push for, uh, you know, the next tenant president to come from the South-South. Is that the only, uh, you know, requirement that, uh, you know, you are looking at? Or are we also looking at maybe, you know, capacity and everything else that he might bring to the table? Well, thank you very much. I'm happy that uh, leaders of the South-South region, uh, South-South geopolitical zone, are coming to terms with uh, my clarion call some two, three weeks ago, that the Senate presidency should be zoned to the South-South. And my reason for making that suggestion and request was based on the fact that the South-South geopolitical zone is not just strategic in the politics of the nation. It is the hub, the economic hub of the country, it is the treasure base of the country. And uh, in this last election of 2020, 2023, it played a very strategic role and contributed so much to the success of the APC presidential candidate. Aware that the South-South zone is the hotbed of uh, PDP, the opposition party, the APC was able to make a lot of inroads and scored over 46% of the uh, votes in the entire six states of the South-South. Uh, for, for that reason and for the fact that uh, it's very important to the well-being of the country, the stability of the country, you need to you know, build or promote policies of inclusion, policies of accommodation policies of uh, uh, <coughs> sorry politics of uh, uh, involvement we need to uh, consciously and deliberately look in the direction of south south in the senate presidency just like the intro you gave the last time we had that opportunity was in 1979 to 1983 uh, the other zones that are asking for this particularly the southeast zone so please you know, see reasons why they should support the South-South Zone, because they've had five Senate presidents in this present dispensation of 24 years. They've had deputy Senate presidents, and uh, the, the, the one of them who emerged deputy Senate president spent 12 years in that position. So if you add eight years of Senate presidency, and plus their 12 years, that's about 20 years in the lives and times of the present legislature. And so the 10th Assembly should look elsewhere, and South-South is strategically positioned to enjoy that recognition. Noted, Mr. Febgua. Now, um, you know, it appears as though the APC has stalled a bit, or maybe it's taking its time. You know, this is all subject to interpretation when it comes to letting us know for sure the stance that it will take when it comes to the Senate presidency, if it will zone it or if it will just be open. When do you anticipate that we might actually get clarification regarding this information? Well, from the fillers we are getting, once the presidential, uh, once the president elect returns to the country, himself being a politician, being a, a political player who understands the dynamics in the country, who also know the workings within the legislature, having been a senator before now, uh, they will be meeting. The neck of the party will meet. The NWC will also meet and uh, discuss, you know, on how to distribute power you know, accordingly, in such a way that there will be a sense of inclusion amongst all the various competing geopolitical zones in the country. Uh, I'm not expecting the, the present exercise to take the form and format of the previous one where there was a crisis of uh, uh, identity in terms of who becomes a new president and uh, 
there was some kind of subtle democratic coup that brought in, you know, uh, uh, distinct senator Ulushola Saraki, uh, Bukola Saraki, you know, in 2015 and all of that. So, but this time around, just like they did in 2019, uh, the party played a role and insisted that they want XYZ persons and XYZ persons emerged because the party insisted that that's what they want. I think in terms of party politics, the political party must at all times be like a bulwark, you know, to ensuring that its aims and aspirations are captured in what happens around the corridors of power, the executive arm and in the legislature, as the case may be. So I'm expecting that there will be a meeting called for that purpose. They will sit back, they will look at the geopolitical zones, they will look at their contribution to the success of the, uh, of the presidential, um, of the president-elect, and for that reason, take a decision that to also put pay to cries of marginalization, cries of uh, uh, exclusion, kind of. So I'm hopeful that the South South will be considered for this position. All right, then. I mean, I understand your... I understand your position regarding this, but, uh, you know, in, in PDP, River State Governor Yensum Wiki and the former governor of Delta State, James Ibori, have thrown their weight behind uh, the deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed Idris Wase. Uh, equally, the former governor, uh, uh, Shegun Oshoba, also described the deputy speaker as his beloved son, whose zone, the North Central, deserved the position of the speaker. Now, I want to know what uh, your reaction is to this. Well, my, my, my first interest is South-South. My second interest is South-South. And my third interest is South-South for Senate presidency. With respect to balancing all the equations and the algorithms of power, with respect to the speakership position of the uh, House of Reps, I, will, I, I am of the opinion, a very considerable for that matter, even though I am not detained by religious consideration, that when you have a... Uh, a Muslim Muslim ticket, first and second citizen, the third and the fourth, that the Senate President and the Speaker should naturally be given to other religions. And when I say other religions, I'm saying it advisedly because it's not just about Christianity alone, there are other people who also believe in other religions. So you have to, uh, the, the much I know of Wasi, he may be, he may, he may have, he may be a ranking House member, but is essentially a, uh, a Muslim from North Central Zone, and uh, I'm expecting that, I'm hoping that the, the party would deliberately and consciously balance the equation with, re with respect to balancing uh, aspirations of uh, uh, other religions, so that when you have a Muslim Muslim, uh, the president and vice president, the senate president and the speaker, should also be of other religions, whether Christians or other religions, aside from being Muslims. That way, we'll be consciously in the nurturing uh, a, a polity that is inclusive, that is also taking cognizance of the variables, the sentiments, and the emotions that have, you know, dominated public discourse in the last uh, six, seven months. And so, when you don't, when you don't consider that, you don't give them that recognition, they to seem to conclude or give vent to the claim by some uh, persons that the APC is trying to. Islamize Nigeria, even though there's nothing like that, but once that particular narration is given currency, then you'll be, you'll be at, at a loss trying to explain it, because the reality of what obtains should also reflect, you know, what the expectations are. So I am for a Christian, Christian, or other religions, as any president and uh, speaker of the House of Reps. Seems as though you're, you know, looking for balance to a large extent. And you did mention that you're seeking the politics of inclusion. I hope I'm not misquoting you there. But I'm wondering, where was this um, call? Where, yes. was, where was this fire when the Muslim Muslim ticket was, you know, being handed over or being presented to Nigerians? We didn't see, we didn't hear your call for inclusion at the time. So... Isn't this the, one of the side effects of you not speaking then? No, no, no. It's, not, it's, not, it's no side effect. You see, let me tell you, there is a common malapropian bluff by those who speak the pidgin language. They say, big man, they talk. Poor man say, in get ideas. 
it, it goes to suggest that if you don't win election, your ideas captured in manifesto will just become mere ideas. You can't. It is because Ashwa Jibola Tinubu defeated other candidates and has become a president elect that we are even able to sit down here and discuss the issue of balancing and inclusion. What was uppermost in his mind as a politician was how to get the votes. So he needed to bend backwards to accommodate a Muslim running mate from the north, knowing full well that the dominant religion in the north is Muslim. So it's Islam. So you can't, uh, you can't run away from that kind of reality. If he had done otherwise and is defeated, he will sit back at home and be lamenting and be agonizing like others are doing now. So for me, the Muslim Muslim tickets has put pay to a lot of claims, counter claims about uh, Nigeria that it is impossible for people to, uh, to win when it's, they are on the same, t uh, same ticket, on the same faith ticket. Just like in 1993, when I'm Abiola and uh, Baba Ghana King, Gibi, both Muslims contested and they won election, which is considered one of the fairest and fairest in the history of this country. So for me, this uh, Ashwaju's ticket has also uh, shown that Nigerians are not detained by religion, but by, by, a, lou a, a, very, by a very lousy minority who are always bringing religion to play, you have to also consciously and deliberately take certain decisions that will also accommodate their interests. Okay, and that's understandable. And in this conversation about who emerges as leader of the Senate and House of Representatives, let's hone in on the issue of, you know, competency and capacity as opposed to zoning and religion and where the person is coming from. Now, on the capacity building of the lawmakers, I am curious to know who your, pick, your picks are for these positions. Well, it's not, it, we have not gotten to the point of picking because I'm not a senator. I'm not a senator elect. But there are individuals and persons who are eminently qualified in the South South geopolitical zone from the APC that can uh, be very viable, formidable, and remarkable uh, leaders to lead the Tenth Assembly. One of them is uh, Goswil Akpabio. Uh, another is uh, my former boss, uh, when, I was, when he was a governor, I served him as a commissioner, Adam Sushomole, and quite a number of other persons. But uh, essentially, all these persons have cognitive experience, they have capacity. Akpabi is regarded as a tra um, common transformer, a, a transformer uh, in a Kwaibom state, you know, turn a rural community to urban, urban center with so many infrastructures here and there. Uh, he's been a minister, he's been a senator, he's coming back as a ranking senator and all that. Oshomole has been a governor, has been chairman of uh, APC, has been NLC president, so he also has experience. So what is key for us is once the party is able to zone the position to South-South, uh, the leaders of the, of the party, the stakeholders and other participants will sit back and take a decision on who will serve the interests of the zone better, whose candidature will be of less acrimony and all of that, so that we'll work together in unism and cohesion to produce someone that will uh, fit the bill. But essentially, if you talk about capacity, you can get the best of brains from the South-South region. And uh, given the fact that the South-South is a treasure base of the country, you cannot ignore their participation. I was listening to one of... Uh, the leaders of the South South, former Senator Udoma Egba. This well, we would have loved to have listened to about, what uh, you heard. Mr. Um, Kasim Afebwa, former um, Commissioner for um, Edo, former Edo State Commissioner for Information. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. We appreciate your insight here on Newsday. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.